Last month, Governor Walz announced a move to new clean car standards. Joining me to offer his perspective on this and the legislature's role in setting transportation policy is the ranking DFL member of the Transportation Committee, Senator Scott Dibble. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Shannon. Governor Wall's announcement that Minnesota will adopt clean car standards means that manufacturers will be required to offer a specific percentage of low emission and zero emission vehicles for sale in the state. Is this a good move? Uh, I think it's a great move. Um, something to remember is that um, the whole country was on track to uh, roll out these standards in total. So this isn't uh, just the California clean car standards. This was going to be in alignment with the EPA standards. Um, what the Clean Air Act allows for, of course, is um, to set uh, certain fuel efficiency standards. And then, um, and really it's about, uh, you know, uh, helping reduce pollution and, and, and carbon dioxide emissions and the like. And then California, um, uh, when the Clean Air Act was first uh, adopted in the 1970s, was allowed to create more uh, stringent, stringent yes. cleaner standards. Mm -hmm. um, and then other states could adopt those standards for themselves. Um, and Minnesota would be joining 14 yeah, other states. Right, I think, yeah, 13 or 14 yeah. other states. Um, under the Obama administration, um, the EPA and the California standards were brought into alignment. Now, just uh, a few weeks ago, or a few months ago, um, we learned that the Trump administration was going to separate those again, go back to the dirtier, uh, less fuel efficient, more carbon dioxide emitting uh, national standards, um, and is actually making a fairly aggressive move to prevent California from doing from exercising its rights under uh, the Clean Air Act. Um, that remains to be resolved. Right. Um, but in the meantime, what Governor Walls has uh, ordered uh, the, the Pollution Control Agency to do is to come into alignment with um, the, clean, the California clean car standards, which we're already, we were already on track to do, um, and undergo a rulemaking process that'll take about two years to work out. So he's basically making the statement that Minnesota is on the side of California and other states that are moving, right. want to move towards a cleaner technology. Right, and the reason for that is that, uh, you know, we've made a great deal of progress in bringing down our carbon emissions and, and reducing our carbon footprint in the energy sector. But we've done almost made almost no progress, no progress at all, really, in the transportation sector. Um, and now uh, we have see more carbon dioxide, more greenhouse gases coming from the transportation sector than we do from generating our electricity. There are other places we need to do some work as well, ag and forestry products and that sort of thing too. But we have the opportunity very easily, inexpensively, um, to make some significant changes in, in how we uh, go about our transportation needs. Uh, in a less polluting way, keeps the public healthier, of course, other pollution, other kinds of pollution is reduced as well, um, and of course lets us get, meet our goals to reduce greenhouse gas emissions um, and, and slow down global warming. So this is coming from the governor's office, right. but there's also the legislature's role. Technology mm -hmm. is changing faster than most people can comprehend, and the combustion engine is something that most people understand both mm -hmm. um, intellectually and from their own experience. These new emerging technologies are often subsidized, in this case now mandated. What is the role of the legislature in these new and emerging technologies? Well, keep in mind, um, this isn't about switching over to uh, wholesale, completely changing the fleet to electrification. That'll be a part but of it's the- pointing in that direction. Right, but um, in the meantime, what this does is it, it uh, really creates fuel efficiency standards for the traditional gasoline-based uh, combustion engine for the most part and then some smaller percentage of vehicles that are part of the fleet. That yeah, like 5% or something right, like that, I would, thought. Would be uh, either zero emission or, or ultra low emission vehicles, probably uh, electric. I mean, hydrogen, other, other forms are, uh, of technology are allowed. Um, it's really uh, uh, oftentimes um, uh, the government's role to create um, these goals and these standards, um, uh, even when it might be um, a little difficult to attain. In, uh, but what happens ultimately is it, creates, it allows those new technologies to become more widely adopted, more commercialized, and, and then suddenly the market takes over, cost comes down, and the, and the technology is commercialized, and the public benefit um, that's realized is, is achieved, um, and, and the technology becomes much more widely available. It's also government's role to provide the, the regulatory framework and the infrastructure and, and those sorts of things to make sure that um, you know, things that the, the community and, and our, our society is running smoothly. Now, Governor Walls said that the move is about protecting the environment, as you've mentioned, but it's also about choice. With this change, Minnesota will have access to more low emission and zero emission vehicles. I think 40 are on the market, and Minnesotans can now purchase 27 of them. This mm -hmm. would bring up that number. 
But according to the Minnesota Auto Dealers Association, more than 80% of Minnesota's auto sales are for bigger vehicles like trucks, SUVs, and minivans, mm -hmm. showing that Minnesotans are tending to want these larger vehicles as opposed to smaller, mm -hmm. you know, electric vehicles or, or vehicles like that. Critics are saying that this move actually means fewer options for Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Does this concern you? Well, no, I think, uh, first of all, we're talking about a very small percentage of required vehicle sales be low or zero emission vehicles. So the auto dealers are making a gross overstatement and I don't know why they would be opposed because of course, um, you know, they know that less than half of the available uh, models um, are, are available to Minnesotans. Even if they want those uh, available to them, the manufacturers won't bring those in because, uh, because they don't get credit in this, in this, in this credit scheme. Um, and if they don't want to bring them into Minnesota, um, they're, they're available to go to the credit bank in, in those states that are more successful in selling more of the zero or low emission vehicles. Um, you know, they, they can bank those credits that they get for overperforming um, the goals that are set forth and, um, and fulfill their obligations that way. So if in fact they, they don't or can't sell those kinds of cars in Minnesota, they're fine. But so you're not saying it's not as majority, black and white as maybe it's been laid out to be? Not, not at all, right. Okay. Yeah, I want to make one more point okay. uh, before I forget it, and that is uh, the Minnesota Department of Health um, just uh, uh, released uh, the findings of a study that show that up to 4,000 Minnesota deaths are attributable to air pollution. Um, and of course, we know a great deal of that air pollution comes from the tailpipes of the vehicles that are being driven around our communities. And this will have a benefit in that regard too. Public health um, is, is a huge beneficiary of this change. Uh, Minnesota is a vast state with climate extremes, as we all know. Uh, while, there, while these new technologies uh, and greener standards will make sense to many in urban areas, how do you make the argument to those in greater Minnesota, rural areas, greater, greater traveling distances, using heavy trucks for snow removal and hauling and putting their you know, boats on the lake and mm -hmm. ice houses? What's the balance? Well, first of all, the technology is improving every day. Um, so to the extent that, um, um, you know, that technology is not available to do that either longer distance or heavier load type work, um, it will come someday. Um, but um, no one is being forced by anything they don't want today. This is about choice and about options and alternatives. And to the extent that uh, the, the low emissions of higher fuel efficient vehicles are being sold, everyone benefits from that. Um, that will be widely adopted commercial technology. Um, commercialized technology, the cost curve has come way, way down in improving our, our gas mileage. And so folks in greater Minnesota should be pleased because they're driving greater distances uh, at the opportunity to buy more fuel efficient cars. Um, also bear in mind that um, the schism now, the separation between what would be the national standards and the California standards um, has triggered a, a resistance and a backlash from the manufacturers, or many of them, not all of them, but many of them are saying, no, no, we were on a good path here and we want to m maintain that path and in developing these technologies and bringing them to the public. Senator Dibble, thank you. Thank you very much.